In today's session, we will be talking about the classification of cost. Okay. We will see how cost can be classified, what are the different categories, and on what basis do we go about classifying these costs into these categories. So in that note, uh, before we start discussing the classification, there are two topics that I would like to touch upon right now. But at a later stage, when we study the elements of cost, I would be discussing those in detail for you. Okay? The first concept that we have to discuss is the concept of cost center. The definition for cost center that is given is uh, production service function active or equipment uh, item of equipment whose cost can be attributed to cost unit. A cost center is the smallest organizational subunit for which separate cost allocation is attempted. Now, when you look from a management perspective, when you take a business on a whole or when you take an organization on a whole, it can be divided into different categories. It can be divided into smaller groups. So an organization would be uh, divided into smaller units called as strategic business unit or SBUs. It can be divided into departments, it can be divided into competencies, etc. Now all this classification that we talk about, that is from a management perspective, that is from an organizational perspective. But in cost accounting, when you look at from a cost accounting perspective, you can divide your entire organization into smaller segments. You can divide your organization into smaller units. The reason why we would go for this division is not from a management point of view. It is not from an organizational point of view. It is not from a work point of view. The reason why from a cost accounting perspective, uh, the organization may be divided into smaller units is because um, it is for us to monitor the cost. So cost center is the smallest segment that you can divide an organization into. Okay? And you would use these cost centers for monitoring the cost, for measuring the cost, for keeping a track of the cost. Let me give you an example. Krishna Jayanti College, as an institution, if you take, there are around 8,000 plus uh, students who are studying. Okay? Now, let's say uh, if the management would like to do a cost analysis, they cannot study the organization on a whole. It will be very difficult because different uh, departments, they have different needs. So for example, a student in biotechnology uh, course, they would need uh, the services of lab, they would need uh, chemicals, they would need lab equipments like uh, centrifuge, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, test you, uh, uh, so, sorry. Uh, uh, so they have different kinds of needs. Whereas if you look at a student who is doing humanities, okay, for them, they may not need access to the, uh, to the biotechnology lab. Okay? For them, the need would be different. Okay? They, they may need uh, uh, access to facilities which are, uh, which are related to their subject. So if you look at the institution on a whole and if the institution wants to keep a track of this, they cannot, they cannot track the cost, they cannot do a cost analysis at the institutional level. So what they would do is the entire institution, they would break it down into smaller parts. Okay. So maybe the ideal way of doing that is breaking it down to departments. But if you look at the departments, within the department, there might be different courses which have varied need. So for example, in humanities department, uh, a student who's studying psychology may need access to psychology lab, which, which, has got, which may have certain equipments, which, have, which may need certain facilities. Whereas a student who's studying language, he may need access to language lab. So the need is different. Okay. So likewise, whenever you think of dividing an organization into smaller segments such that you can easily monitor the cost, you can keep a, you can keep a track of the costs that are incurred, that small segment is called as a cost center. Okay. That small segment is called as cost center. So something very important for you to understand right now is that if you look at the organization, the organization can be divided into smaller segments. The division of the smaller segment is not from an organization point of view. It is not from a management point of view. It is from uh, tracking, keeping a track of your cost. Okay? So it is to keep a track of your cost. So from that per se, that's the reason why we would 
that's the reason why we were we have this concept of cost center so when you have cost center what happens is it ensures accountability it ensures accountability from the organization's uh, side okay that's the reason why you would have this cost center so sometimes the cost uh, the cost accounting division that is uh, breaking down the organization into different cost centers may be similar to the organization structure may not be similar okay so i'll repeat that the division of an organization into cost centers may be the same as the organization structure it may not be the same as the organization structure so you can have an independent division of the business into cost centers which is completely different from the organization structure that is quite possible okay which is that is quite possible okay so please uh, please remember cost center division is entirely different from the organizational structure now cost centers can be of two types you have what is called as production cost centers and then you have what is called as service cost centers Uh, production cost centers are those cost centers which are directly associated with the manufacturing operation service cost centers are those cost centers which will support the uh, production cost center so i'll repeat that production cost centers are those cost centers which are directly they they are involved directly in the manufacturing procedure service cost centers these are cost centers which are which are Uh, which are needed to support the production cost center so i'll give you an example a, in a manufacturing firm you may have a production department so the production department will be the production cost center because they are directly involved in the operation but the manufacturing factory may have a, a canteen okay. they may have a canteen but people sitting in the canteen they are not directly involved in the manufacturing process but if canteen does not uh, function what happens is people who work in production department it is very difficult for them to have refreshments and food so if the canteen does not function what happens is it's very difficult for the uh, uh, for the people working in production department to to carry on with their routine activities so the canteen is there to support the production department so the canteen is now a service cost center so the canteen now becomes a service cost center i'll give you another example uh, as a faculty member of this college uh, uh, i'm 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 a part of uh, the the uh, i'm a part of the uh, the team which conducts direct uh, which conducts classes for you okay so base so in in when you think from that perspective uh, i would belong to a production cost center because i'm in directly involved in the activity of the college which is to uh, carry out online classes whereas we have a we have a payroll team in the college now the responsibility of the payroll team is to provide teachers with salary they would do the computation the, they would do the various calculations which are needed and they would ensure that end of the month the salary would get paid to the uh, the respective teachers but is the payroll department directly involved in the production they are not directly involved but if the payroll department is not there then the production department cannot work okay so the payroll department of the college will be a service cost center so they are needed to support the production cost center so when you look at the cost center there are of two types you have production cost centers and then you have service cost centers next uh, thing that we have to understand is cost unit now cost unit refers to the unit of quantity with which you can you can uh, associate costs or costs can be expressed in terms of cost units okay so i'll give you an example okay uh, if you have to when you walk into a shop to buy shoes you will ask him the cost of a pair of shoes you will ask him for the cost of a pair of shoes you will not ask him how much does the left uh, left shoe cost how much does the right shoe cost okay how much does the left shoe cost how much does the right shoe cost now sum up these two together and let me know what is the total cost that is not how we would look at it okay? that is not how we would look at it when we ask the shopkeeper what is the cost of a shoe the price that the shopkeeper would be disclosing to us is the pair of shoe okay so it would include the left side as well as the right side 
or if you were to visit a hotel and if you would uh, if you would and you decide to stay there uh, you decide to stay at the hotel for a few nights when you ask the the the, the uh, friend desk uh, you ask the receptionist you ask the people sitting at the friend desk what is your rate okay they will tell you the rent for one day okay they will tell you the rent for one day okay they don't tell you like you know sleeping on the bed for one night so much for using uh, the bathroom so much for watching the television for one hour so much they don't tell you like that what they would tell you is what is the total cost that you will incur for availing the service of that hotel room for one specific day so that is what is referred to as a cost unit cost unit refers to the unit of quantity of a product service or time with which the total cost can be expressed Okay. so what basically happens if it is important for us to understand cost unit is because whenever we decide or whenever we compute uh, cost whenever we have to express cost we have to know what is the cost unit because we have to sum up all the costs which are associated and then we have to give the total cost so for this this it is extremely important for us to understand the cost unit Okay. so for example you decide to do some uh, uh, rework at your home you decide to do some renovation work at your home you decide to uh, lay out a new carpet at your at your living room okay so when you were to take quotes you would be taking quotes in terms of square foot what is the cost of laying uh, uh, my my living room is like you know maybe 120 square foot what is the total cost so that is the cost unit okay so in in a nutshell cost unit refers to the unit of quantity of a product or a service uh, with which uh, you can assert it you can express all the costs which are associated and it can be communicated to the customer so we have discussed what is meant by cost center we have discussed what is meant by cost unit in that line let us continue now we will talk about the classification now there are different classifications um, uh, there are different classifications of cost the first uh, classification that we are going to discuss is based on identifiability based on the traceability of the cost based on traceability of the cost cost can be to uh, cost can be mentioned as direct cost and indirect cost it can be called as direct cost and indirect cost now whenever uh you incur a cost and that cost can be directly associated with uh with a specific uh process when it can be when it can be associated with a specific department when it can be associated with a specific cost unit that is called as direct cost so any cost which you cannot directly associate such costs are called as indirect costs Okay. so based on traceability we have two classifications one is direct cost the other is indirect cost okay so based on traceability we have two classifications one is direct cost the other is indirect cost let me give you an example okay so at home uh, i know it may be a little maybe a bad example to choose at uh, uh, especially at the lunch time but this may be the best example for you for for the idea of, uh, to for you to get the idea of what is direct cost and indirect cost mummy decides to make chicken curry at home okay so if mummy has to make chicken curry one of the ingredients that you would obviously be needing for chicken curry is chicken okay so mummy would go to the chicken center and mummy would let's say buy like 1 kg of chicken so now that 1 kg of chicken uh, you know what the chicken 1 kg of chicken is needed for that 1 kg of chicken would be needed for making chicken curry that is a direct cost but whereas uh for mummy to go ahead and prepare the delicious chicken curry for you she would be needing some other ingredients as well so i'll give one of the ingredients which mummy would be needing is salt okay mum what one of the ingredients that mummy would be needing is salt now mummy would not go to the nearby kirana store or mummy would not go to the nearby grocery store and she would say give me one spoon of salt she would not do that or she would not go to the store and say give me 5 g of salt she would not do that and the shopkeeper may ask why do you need 5 g of salt oh i just said that i need to make chicken curry at home 
she wouldn't do that right what she would be doing is she would be buying the salt packet she would be coming and keeping at home depending on the need of that specific uh, uh, cooking activity that mummy is doing depending on the dish that mummy is preparing she would use the the appropriate quantity of salt now the cost of salt which is incurred over there you it is very difficult for you to pinpoint and say okay let, let's say a salt packet costs around 20 rupees and that uh, on an average you get around uh, 1 kg of salt and out of that 1 kg of salt for making the delicious chicken curry mummy may be using maybe one or two spoons okay now it becomes very difficult for us to pinpoint and say this is the exact amount of salt that i've used okay so the salt that mummy would be using as a part of preparing the chicken curry would be indirect cost so likewise in an organization as well you may have direct cost and you may have indirect cost so direct cost whenever you can associate it whenever you can pinpoint and say this is the exact co co cost it is referred to as direct cost whereas indirect cost when you cannot pinpoint uh, and then say it's uh, 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 the amount of cost such costs are called as indirect cost i'll give you another example you decide to hire a carpenter uh, to make some furniture so the wood needed to construct to make the furniture that you need that's an example of direct cost but the nails which are needed to make sure all the wooden pieces are held together maybe the screws that are needed to hold all the wooden pieces together that would be an example of indirect cost because it is very difficult for you to say okay for constructing one large sofa i have exactly used 18 nails it is very difficult so that would be an example of indirect cost you walked into a tailor shop you decide to stitch a brand new shirt for yourself the direct cost would be the the material that you would be need but for the the for the tailor to stitch that uh, shirt for you he may be needing uh, thread so thread is an example of indirect cost so based on identifiability of the cost you can classify it as direct as well as indirect next classification is based on activity okay so or based on the volume of production okay based on the level of activity okay well, this we would have already touched upon in management accounting but nonetheless we will revisit this once again so based on the level of activity based on the volume of production cost can be classified into three fixed cost variable cost semi variable cost i'll repeat based on the level of activity based on the volume of production cost can be classified into three they are fixed cost variable cost semi variable cost now what is fixed cost whenever the cost remains the same irrespective of the level of activity such kinds of costs are called as fixed cost so whether you produce one unit or whether you produce 1000 units the cost remains the same example of fixed cost variable cost uh, the cost depend on the level of output if you produce more you would you would incur more cost if you produce less you will incur less cost such kinds of costs are called as variable cost then you have what is called a semi variable cost okay then you have what is called as semi variable cost now what is semi variable cost semi variable costs are those costs which has a certain level of its activity which is fixed no matter what you do it will remain unchanged and then a certain level of it is variable in nature so we'll pick up on examples for this an example of fixed cost would be rent that you pay for your factory premises example of fixed cost would be rent that you would pay for your factory premises so whether you produce one unit or whether you produce 10000 units the cost will remain the same okay whether you produce one unit or whether you produce 10000 units the cost will remain unaltered it will remain unchanged such costs are called as fixed cost variable cost example would be raw material the raw material that you use as a part of your production activity those uh, costs are said to be variable cost so if you produce more goods then you will need obviously more raw material so your raw material cost will obviously go up if you need less raw material what would happen is you will consume only less with less raw materials so in such cases the uh, very such cases that cost will remain less 
Now, an example that I could provide you for semi-variable cost is remuneration that you pay for your sales representatives. Remuneration that is paid for sales representatives. So usually sales representatives, they will have a fixed salary. So no matter what, what they do, they will get that fixed amount of salary. Then they will have what is called as an incentive. So the incentive will depend on the target. If they sell more goods, what will happen is they'll get more incentive. If they sell less goods, what will happen is they will have less incentives. Okay, so that's an example of semi variable In the present COVID condition, in the present COVID scenario, one area that organizations are really struggling to uh, uh, contain is the fixed cost. So for example, an IT park, an IT firm, uh, due to the government restrictions, all the employees are, you know, they're forced to work from home. Okay, they, are, they are forced to work from home. So whether the employees are coming into uh, uh, in, in for work or not, the IT company will have to pay the real estate agency the rent for that premises. Okay, they will have to pay rent for that premises. So that's a fixed cost. So this is one reason why some of these organizations are struggling a lot. Okay, this is one reason why some of these organizations are struggling a lot. Uh, I was having an interaction with a person, my neighbor, he works for Times of India and then he was discussing during the lockdowns period because people had, people were very skeptical, they had a fear because usually what happens is newspapers is something uh, which is handled by different people because it has to get printed in the press, it has to be uh, loaded onto trucks, it has to be sent to different parts of the state, different parts of the city then what happens is it has to be loaded at different um, uh, news agencies then from the new different news agency delivery boys will have to pick up the newspapers they will come to your door to door so what happens in the long run is it is you're just changing multiple hands but people are very cautious they, they are scared if they will contract uh, uh, corona because uh, it has been handled by multiple people so a lot of people started cutting off this subscription of newspapers they, they called in and they said we don't want newspapers for another six months one year etc but what has happened with 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 the news agency is that they have invested a lot of money for renting premises uh, for, for the press they have invested a lot of money to, for high-speed press machines, for printing the newspaper, etc. But all this will continue to remain as a fixed cost. Okay? The only thing that they would be able to cut down is the newspaper, the, the paper, the paper that they use for print, that is the variable cost. So that they will be able to cut out, but the fixed cost will remain the same. Okay? So this is one area that some of the organizations are struggling during the lockdown period. Next uh, classification of cost is based on control. Uh, control. What is the level of control that you can exercise? So based on this, cost can be classified into two. You have controllable cost and you have non-controllable cost. So controllable cost, the cost that can be regulated by the management authority, if they have a control, they, they can say, okay, we've noticed such and such costs are happening. Let us put a control on it. Such kind of costs are called as controllable costs. Then you have non-controllable costs. The management does not have any influence. They don't have control. So one example that I can give you for controllable costs would be raw material. Okay. But non-controllable costs, another example that I can give you is depreciation. Depreciation, the, the wear and tear that you calculate on your uh, fixed assets. The management does not have a control. Management cannot come and say, okay, from this year, uh, next two years, we will, uh, the, uh, then let there be no depreciation on, on the fixed assets. Let there be no wear and tear on the fixed assets. They cannot say that because it is beyond their control. It is beyond their authority. So such kinds of costs are called as uh, controllable cost and non-controllable cost. The next classification is based on time. Okay, the next classification is based on time. So based on time, we have two uh, we have two classifications. One is historical cost and the other is predetermined cost. Okay? So I'll explain what these are. Historical costs are costs that you will estimate once it has occurred. So before the activity taking place, it would be very difficult for you to know what is the cost. Okay? So 
historical cost, the activity will have to take place. Then you will go back to your books of accounts and then you will understand what is the, his, uh, what is the historical cost. Okay, there are some, some costs like that. I will pick up on the examples once I have discussed predetermined costs. Predetermined costs are those costs which, uh, which you are able to estimate even before the activity has commenced or even before the activity has taken place. Even before the activity has taken place, such kinds of costs are called as predetermined costs. Okay, so historical costs, these are costs that, that you will be able to estimate only uh, when, when, uh, when the activity has uh, taken place. Predetermined costs, um, these are costs that, uh, that, we, uh, that, that you're able to anticipate in, yeah, in advance. So I'll give you an example. Uh, a few days back, a friend of mine decided to register a website for his business. He decided to register a website. Uh, now, the specific domain that he was looking for, so let's, let's, uh, let's assume that to be abc.com. Let's assume that to be abc.com. So for his business need, he, for his business, for sure he needs abc.com. So it's difficult for him to function without abc.com. Now, when he checked, uh, as of now, there are no organizations which have used that abc.com domain, but someone has already registered it. So someone has taken that domain, but they're not using it. So um, he, had, he had availed godaddy.com services and godaddy, the, the concerned team, called him up and said, sir, if you still insist, we can try and get this domain for you. Okay. We will try and negotiate with the, 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 the owner of the domain, but we are not able to commit a price. Okay. We are not able to commit a price right now. So we will try and negotiate with the person and then we will be, uh, we are, uh, only then we will be able to know what will be the total cost of registering that domain. So in such cases, my friend will come to know the cost of registering the domain only when the activity has completed, only when the activity has been fulfilled. So that's an example of historical cost. Okay. Predetermined cost, even before you, uh, even before the activity has taken place, you know the cost in advance. So, for example, you decide to go to a multiplex and watch a movie. You decided to watch first day first show movie. Okay. So, even before the activity has taken place, you know what is the cost. You know the cost of a ticket is one twenty rupees. The cost of having one one uh, one packet of popcorn is. is let's say another 50 rupees. So you're able to anticipate, you're able to estimate the cost well in advance. Such kinds of costs are called as predetermined costs. So based on the computation, the time frame that you, you apply for computation of cost, it can be classified as historical as predetermined costs. Okay. Now, next is uh, based on normality, based on the occurrence of the cost. Uh, such kinds of costs are called as uh, so, based on the occurrence, the cost can be classified into two. You have normal cost and then you have abnormal cost. So, normal costs are those costs um, for, a, for a fixed level of activity. Um, you know what is you know what is the uh, you know what is the cost that you're likely to incur. Um, such kinds of costs are called as normal costs. But in some cases, what happens is out of the blue without your expectation without your anticipation um, you may incur some costs and such kinds of costs are called as abnormal costs okay. so for example um, in your in your firm in your manufacturing firm you had some laborers and the remuneration that you pay to the laborers is called as wages so you know as long as they work uh, you will have to uh, you will have to uh, pay them wages. So that cost is called an abnormal cost. But one fine day, all your laborers, they decide to go on an indefinite strike. They, defy, they, they decide to go on an indefinite strike. And at the time of negotiating, um, you, they have demanded for a bonus. Okay? Your employees, your laborers, they demanded for a bonus. Now, that bonus, that demand for bonus is something which is very unusual. It's not something that you have every day. Every day, you don't pay bonuses to your employee, your laborers. Okay? So in such cases, that payment of a bonus to your laborers, that will be an example of an abnormal cost. 
So abnormal cost, the cost that you're incurring, which is not a part of your regular, uh, which is not a part of your routine activity, it is not a part of your regular activity, that is called as abnormal cost. So you have normal cost and then you have abnormal cost. Normal cost, those costs which are a part of your routine activity, it is called as normal. Anything which is outside beyond that, it is called as abnormal. Okay, now the, we have some more classifications that we have to discuss and these classification that these are actually special uh, cost categories uh, that we will be speaking about. This is used specifically by the management, especially from a decision um, perspective, especially from a perspective of taking important decisions. This I will be uh, dealing in the next uh, session. Uh, but for time being, uh, these were some important classifications of the uh, of the course. So I will do a recap of uh, the uh, uh, of all the topics that we have covered. So to, we will revisit all the topics that we have covered so far. We start off with cost center. We saw cost center refers to the smallest segment of an organization uh, with which you will be able to collect the cost, track the cost and monitor the cost. Then cost centers can be of two types. You have production cost center, then you have service production, uh, service cost center. Whenever the cost center is directly associated with a production activity, it is called as production cost center. When it supports the production cost center, such kind of cost centers are called as service cost centers. Cost unit, it refers to the smallest unit, the quantity with which you are able to associate all your costs. Then we discuss the classification of cost. The first classification is based on identifiability. How quickly can you trace the cost? Based on this, you have direct cost, you have indirect. When you're able to identify the cost um, directly with an activity, with a cost center, with a cost unit, such kinds of costs are called as direct costs. When you're not able to identify the cost directly with an activity or a cost center, it is called as indirect cost. Based on activity, you have three categories, fixed, variable, semi-variable. When the cost remains the same, irrespective of the level of activity, it is called as fixed. When it varies from Depending on the level of activity, it is called as variable. Semi variable, certain portion is fixed, certain portion is variable in nature. Based on control, you have controllable costs, you have non controllable. Controllable costs are those costs which can be regulated by the management. If the management cannot regulate the cost, it's called as non controllable costs. Based on time, you have historical and then you have predetermined uh, cost that you estimate after the occurrence of the activity is called a historical. When you can estimate the cost well in advance, it's called as predetermined cost. Uh, normal and abnormal uh, uh, costs which are routine, uh, which are quite usual. These are costs that you can ex expect as a part of your routine activity. It's called as normal cost whenever uh, you are not a, whenever you have costs that, that, that are occurred out of the blue without your anticipation, without your expectation, such kinds of costs are called as abnormal costs. So with that, we've come to the end of the sessions uh, for today.